இன்னும் இரண்டு முக்கிய உரைகள் இருக்கின்றன முதலாவதாக உச்சநீதிமன்றத்துடைய மேனாள் நீதிபதி மாண்பமை நீதியரசர் கோபாலகவுடா அவர்கள் பேசுகிறார்கள் அதை தொடர்ந்து எழுத்தமரவர்கள் பேசி இந்த கருத்தரங்கை நிறைவு செய்வார்கள் மிக முக்கியமான இந்த தேசிய கல்விக் கொள்கையினுடைய நடவடிக்கை தமிழ்நாட்டில் the government of tamil nadu has constituted a committee i think so it's the only state to have constituted a committee for evolving a state education policy there is a case going on in the high court somebody has filed a case asking the court to direct the implementation of nep 2020 so that case and, and the judges asked uh, uh, government lawyers whether any other state has opposed it uh, we do not know whether the constitution says uh, uh, that uh, only all the states should together come uh, to question the central government i don't think so there is any provision like that uh, so that that is not an issue beyond that beyond that question there are several issues in the nep 2020 uh, which will demolish the entire education system and the, uh, uh, democracy itself so adu da nam munnadi irukkoodiya miga periya sawal அதை திரு சுரேஷ் பாபு அவர்கள் தன்னுடைய உரையில விளக்கி இருக்கிறார்கள் அவருக்கு நன்றி சொல்லி இப்பொழுது நீதியரசர் மாண்பமை கோபாலகவுடா அவர்களை உரையாற்ற அழைக்கின்றோம் the word and sentence will rebound again that is the the powerness powerfulness of the language and it's a very meaningful language is a common man language so i love the language but i am unable to speak in tamil my wife will speak but i can't speak <laughs> at the outset uh, before that i wanted to follow the formalities the president of this uh, organization state platform for common school system Dr. P. Ratna Samapati and keynote address delivered by my brother Honorable Mr. Justice K. Gnand Prakasham and challenge to democracy the lecture delivered by Dr. C. Lakshmanan Associate Professor of MIDS lawyer friend uh, pb suresh babu the parliament member from this state dr tirumala 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 valan tiruma wala wala van and the center of the function mr author author of this book which i released is mr suresh babu at the outset and my dear students friends from print media and electronic media my professor friend baladanda pani is my good old friend i am happy to see him in this audience my loved student friends at the outset i must congratulate the state platform for common school system in tamil nadu having organized this function on an important topic of national education policy of 
which has got a very, very, very bad ramification upon the people of this country, the young generation of this country. I must also congratulate Mr. Suresh Babu having brought out a compilation of various renowned educationist letters which have been published in the various newspapers across the country and compiled all those letters, brought out in the form of a book which I launched today and hand over to the parliament member hoping that he will do something in the parliament along with the other parliament members. I must uh, congratulate Tamil Nadu state government. It is only the government which is opposing national education policy. And coming out very vocally that this is opposed to the constitutional philosophy and the concept enshrined and the preamble of the Constitution of India, which cannot be accepted. We will not accept. That is why they drafted the bill in relation to the need, sent it to the governor, he kept it with him and again sent back, again resent it by the Legislative Assembly. The Chief Minister, we must uh, congratulate him having taken a, a bold step. I must also congratulate the Finance Minister of Tamil Nadu State Government. I saw his uh, lectures, not lecture, interview with the NDTV very recently. He is the person who has understood the difference between the central government and the Union of India. There is no central government concept in the Constitution of India. He ha nobody has pointed out this aspect. It is the finance minister of this state. We must congratulate him. I come kindly come communicate my congratulations to him. He has got the courage and conviction and well-read person, well understood the constitutional concept, and he has rightly pointed out there is no central government, it is only the Union of India in a federal future of the constitution. That is why these Tamil Nadu state has rightly taken up the cause of the young generation of this country that national education policy runs contrary to the preamble of the Constitution of India, Part 3 of the Constitution of India, Part 4 of the Constitution of India. It is unacceptable. We will not allow to implement this national education policy as it is anti-people policy is the stand taken which I completely endorse it. As the former judge of the Supreme Court of India, I have read it, I have understood it, I am in agreement with the opposition to the national education policy as it is opposed to the, the ethos cultural values, the, the preamble of the Constitution of India, the director principles of the Constitution of India, both constitutes the human rights. It is in violation of the human rights of the people of this country. Very succinctly presented by the speakers Particularly, the speaker, when I entered this auditorium, Rajendra Babu and Suresh Babu, they said 
that this is against the spirit of the Constitution of India. Constitution of India is our Bible. It is a political document. This is what has been said by the nine judge bench of Supreme Court of India in Bombay's case, SR Bombay versus Union of India. Earlier to that, 13 judge bench in Keshavananda Bharti's case, they said it is an organic document. So, Constitution of India is the Bible. It is not only Bible, what is called uh, Mahabharata, that Krishna, Bhagavad Gita. This is the Bhagavad Gita. For Sikhs, it is Sikh Granth in a multi religion country. The Constitution of India is accepted by people of this country. On 26th January 1950, we became Republic India. 22nd November 1949, the draft resolution drafted by Constituent Assembly, drafted by a committee of Constitution Committee headed by the architect Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. This has been accepted by letter and spirit, 75 years of independence of India. We have accepted the Constitution of India. This Constitution of India contemplates that has been interpreted by the Supreme Court, very recent judgment of 2022, that it is a federal feature of the Constitution of India. In that context, the understanding of the finance minister of the state, central government and the state government, central government concept is not there, federal feature of the government, you are a union of India, you don't have the control except 356, etc., etc. Federal feature of the Constitution of India, each state is independent state. State legislature have empowered under the Constitution of India and Article 246 to, to enact the laws which are uh, provided in relation to the entries provided in the list 2 and the entry list 3, that is the state list and the concurrent list of the 7th schedule of the Constitution of India. So therefore, the governance of the people of the country is under the Constitution of India, either by the Union of India or by the state governments in a federal feature of the Constitution of India. State is empowered to enact certain laws from the entries list 2 under list 3. So therefore, the parliament must take note of the fact while enacting the law in exercise of its legislative power and list one and list three and during the emergency 246-2 also, they must not encroach upon the powers of the state legislative, legislative power this they must keep in mind. If any law enacted by the parliament in exercise of the legislative powers from the entry, say the list one or list three, if it encroaches to that extent, those provisions of that act must be read down. It's not binding on the state according to my understanding of the constitutional philosophy. So we have to examine this aspect and put the test of national education policy of 2020. Does it encroach upon the state legislative power either enact the law or state governments in exercise of their 
powers to formulate the policy of education policy, I am only confining to educational policy here, to give, impart education to the children, primary, secondary education, and undergraduation education, except the technical education, which will fall under the 64, 65, 66, etc. Particularly with reference to 25 entry, it is in the concurrent list of list three of seventh schedule. We have to test this national education policy, whether it encroaches upon state legislature to enact the law or law which is already enacted. It, if it encroaches upon that, would NEP can be asked to implement by the central government, by the Union of India, through the to the state governments is the question which are required to be very deeply considered by all the political parties in this country and people of this country, keeping in view that Democratic Republic India is also the basic structure of the Constitution of India. If any law or policy which would affect the basic structure of the Constitution, including not only the Democratic Republic India, democracy, here the question is democracy. Democracy means what? Democracy, Democratic Republic India is held to be the basic structure of the Constitution. This is what has been said in Keshavananda Bharati's case, 13 judge bench, Constitution bench judgment. If the Constitution contemplates and provides for the democracy. Democracy means for the people, by the people, of the people. Suresh Babu was explaining to us how it will, this policy is contrary to the democratic principles, which is the basic structure of the Constitution. If it is opposed to the democratic principles, opposed to the people, across the country and people of various states, if you try to enforce, implement, ask to implement NEP through states and states only be agencies of the Union of India, if they think like that, then the meaning of federal future is completely taken out from the interpretation made by the Supreme Court of India. That should not be allowed to happen in this country. That will not be allowed to happen in this country. Parliament, yes, you have got the power to enact the law. Yet while exercising your legislative power, you must be very conscious what subject matter, what entry you are project, uh, presenting the bill. If you exceed your jurisdiction, that portion of the law, according to my understanding of the Constitution and judgments of the Supreme Court, that must be simply ignored that will not affect the rights of the state at all. That's my understanding. Now, this NEP on various counts is not for the betterment of the people of the country. It is not at all. Because you are telling only medium of instruction. What medium of instruction? It's a multi, a, a multi religion, multi linguistic, multi caste, sub caste, tribal people. Each region is totally within the state is different, different dialectics, different languages, different caste, different sub caste. With all this, the Constitution provides the integrity of the nation. So if it is integrity of the nation, the multicultural country, pluralist society, multi-religion country, pluralist society, integrity must be protected. Disintegration shall not be allowed. That means to stay that the multicultural country, multi-religion country, 
multi cash and sub cash all these things must be protected under the constitution of india if it is any violation that will not if the violation by enacting the law as rightly pointed out by uh, the speaker mr gajapati babu am i sir, correct sir gajendra babu it is in blatant violation of article 132 of the constitution of india yes any law that violates your fundamental rights that is unsustainable under the constitutional scheme this is what has been said in any number of judgments by the supreme court and various constitutional courts across the country so article 132 says that if any law including the policy which is nep runs contrary to the equality disparity not allowing the people from the tribal area down trodden section of the society backward class of the section of the society if you try to impose one language to be learned eh, by implementing nep it is impossible and that means you are trying to deprive the right of education to all the children of this country that is not the scheme of the constitution you are required to treat everybody every section of the society equally and equal protection of laws is what is contemplated in article 14 of the constitution of india so if you say by introducing nep i will introduce only sanskrit as the medium of instruction it is very very difficult these people do not understand i hail from a village i hail i am not from a urban area i don't disrespect the urban people but the people who are living in the slums people who are living in the harijan girijanes people who are in the village is a slum according to me even after 75 years of independence of this country can you ask them to learn which is not the language of their mother tongue what is their mother tongue in tamil tamil nadu tamil is mother tongue in karnataka it is kannada different uh, dialect is different uh, usage of words etc etc can you impose this you have to learn what we have not learned my parents have not learned my grandparents have not learned they do not know what is this uh, uh, the sanskrit you wanted to medium of instruction under the nep implementation that means you wanted to deprive our the mother tongue language while imposing this national education policy is it possible is it practicable is it not a moment to deprivation of an opportunity to get education that's the question which is required to be answered by the framers of this national education policy so integrity aspect you will disintegrate is it your object to keep the country intact by implementing this national education policy if it is your object to keep the country and govern the country under the constitution of india integrity of the nation is very very important very very important if you impose this kind the people will rebel people you will not impart education what is the percentage of education you are to the people this uh, after, even after 75 years how many what is the percentage of people even after the reservation scheduled caste scheduled tribe backward class etc how many, what is the percentage of employment you have given what is the the, the number of uh, the ias and ips officers uh, uh, are from the scheduled caste scheduled tribe and backward class people so they are going to govern us the bureaucracy will govern us the parliament member giving a, a small reservation quota and reservation parliament reservation legislative assembly these people is it proportionate to their population 
if it is not proportionate to their population, then how can you say that that section of the society will be represented effectively in the parliament or the state legislature? That's the point. The point is that any legislature, any, any law, any policy which is framed and passed by the parliament and state legislature without giving proper and adequate representation to that section of the society, I think that great injustice is happening even after 75 years of independence. That's what Suresh Babu was telling. The preamble of the constitution, we the people of India, constitute union of India to secure what? So justice. What justice? Social justice. Social justice for whom? Oppressed suppressed and weaker sections of the society, particularly the 50% of the population, the woman. Have we given 50% reservation in the parliament and the state legislature? So, unrepresented. Social justice, to render social justice, economic justice, the word political justice. Political justice, in the recent judgment, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, that backward class representation if it is exceeds beyond 50 percent, Indra Sahani's case, that is not permissible. You require digital empirical uh, the st statistics. Who asked you not to take? That is not the issue anyway. I am on the point that political reservation, political justice, political justice to the people is required to represent them in the parliament and the state legislature to avoid to pass this kind of anti-people, anti-downtrodden uh, people law which will not uh, take the country move forward at all. How can, uh, if you don't give education to the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe people, slum dwellers, backward class people, how can you expect uh, that they will uh, uh, constitute the mainstream of the society? How can they participate in the uh, democracy? How can they understand what is democracy? How can they understand what is parliament? How can they understand what is social justice? How can they understand economic justice? How can they understand the uh, fundamental rights guaranteed in part three of the constitution of India? Even after giving education, the, what type of education is totally different? I am on the uh, different uh, aspect of that matter. At least basic Education required to be imported to the, all the people of this country. That has not happened. Even 50% of it, the uh, literacy is not there. If 50% of literacy is not there, remaining 50% are illiterate people. And how can you say that governance under the constitution? So therefore, my dear friends, that education is a paramount consideration for any responsible government to govern the people under the constitution of India. So in the name of NEP national education policy, please test this national education policy in the backdrop of Radha Krishnan, the president of India, the committee. Examine the Kotari Commission committee. In, those, in these two committees, the people, academicians, Experts were there, thousands of expert opinions were collected, considered by the, those committees. But in this case, NEP, 1,000 odd the expert opinions. So experts are not at all there in this committee at all. So this is the point. So if you want to frame national educational policy, so how can you say national educational policy when each state legislature is empowered and constitutional mandate to give compulsory education up to the 10th standard to have their own type of educational policy and the law on this aspect. If they can frame the law and policy, each state is empowered to do it. How can you bulldoze that power by introducing national educational policy? So that encroaches the federal structure of the Constitution of India. And that will also affect the, the right to education of the people of this country. And this is rightly 
uh, pointed out it will affect the uh, democratic principles of the constitution of india so therefore uh, not only this whether this national education policy bill which was introduced during the uh, before the corona uh, period was it debated if it is debated suggestions given by the parliament members while debating the subject on each aspect of the matter was it incorporated in the national education policy if it is not incorporated how can you enforce this national education policy which is a comprehensive policy which will beneficial to the people of this country one national education policy this is all the runs contrary to the constitutional uh, the principles and the preamble the fundamental rights direct principle state policy i i, I am uh, appealing to the the countrymen this is the beginning where tamil nadu state is the beginning to start and oppose in each state the national education policy that will affect the 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 rights of fundamental human rights of the people of this country i i, I hope that from you it starts it spreads across the country then only you are the saviors of this country and democracy of this country uh, I, i hope that i'll stop here and uh, i have launched the book uh, i read the book the compilation is excellent he has taken lot of pains uh, the concept note is also excellent i am in full agreement with the concept note the concept note is excellent i request the the friends from print media and electronic media widely publish it so that people will understand it and slowly they will react to it and you are doing great service to the the people of this country and you will be the protectors of the constitution of india the constitution is being trying to mutilate by the the vested interest people which we cannot accept it we will not allow to happen it and people of this country are very 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 strong enough to face and oppose this kind of anti people anti democratic anti constitutional the scheme or the policy or the law thank you very much for having given me this opportunity